Welcome to the 2020 Sizzling Summer Series, sponsored by the UNMC College of Public Health Office of Public Health Practice. We are grateful for our partners on this series, the Midwestern Public Health Training Center, the Nebraska Association of Local Health Directors, and the Nebraska Business Development Center at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. My name is Katie Brander. I am the Manager of Workforce Development and Leadership Programs in the Office of Public Health Practice, and I am lucky to be your host for this series. This summer series is focused on the strategic skill set of change management. Over the months of June, July, and August, we will host the three-part series, offering one part twice each month. Today, we start at the beginning with part one, change and the individual. Before I turn it over to our speaker, a few logistics. Because of the number of participants, we ask that you keep yourself muted on today's call, except when we send you to your breakout rooms. You'll have to unmute to have conversation there. If you have any questions for our speaker, I will be monitoring the chat box throughout the call. And if you are experiencing technical difficulties, please send me a private chat for support. We are recording today's webinar and the slides from today will be posted on the Office of Public Health Practice website after the beginning of July. If you would like to take notes on today's call, you will find a file in the chat box that you can download. I'll also repost that file here in just a moment. And if you're unable to download that from Zoom, you can chat your email address to me and I'll email it to you as soon as we get started here. The document is a notes page designed to help you follow along on today's call. Both the recordings and the slides will be available after June 30th, as I mentioned, and a link to the evaluation will also follow this call. Evaluation data will be used to inform the content for the next call in the series, for quality improvement on the series overall, and for reporting purposes to our funders, so we are very thankful in advance for the feedback that you give in that evaluation. Our speaker for this series is Michael Perdun. Michael has a lot of experience managing change, whether he likes it or not. He is a teacher and speaker on change management, project management, and team building through the Nebraska Business Development Center, and he leads a cybersecurity team at the Omaha Public Power District. Before his current life in IT, Michael worked as a public healther for Omaha Healthy Kids Alliance, and he is currently the board president of MilkWorks, a nonprofit community breastfeeding center in Nebraska. Michael is a trainer, facilitator, father, partner, instructor at UNO, former collegiate speech and debate nerd, that's what I call him, a self-proclaimed Air Force brat, and the world's biggest soccer fan. So welcome to the Sizzling Summer Series, Michael. We're excited to have you with us. Thank you, Katie, and, and thank everybody on the call today. This is, uh, this is an amazing group. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, so as, as Katie said, I, I am, I geek out on change. Um, I, I love talking about this topic. I, I love working with teams that, that are, are going through change. And, and so, um, to think about the change that we've all gone through in the last 90 days is incredible. Um, We've, we've all had our, our worlds and our, our work and our, and our home lives completely upended. And for, for some of us, that's gone probably better than we could have ever imagined. Um, for other parts of it, it it's probably been a, a nightmare that we've just hung on for dear life to. And so for me, as, as we think about you know, covering change management as, as a topic over the course of the next few months, I really start at the beginning, which is really change in the individual. If, if we're not good at managing change within ourselves, um, then we have no hope of helping our teams and our organization manage change effectively. And so I'm, I'm really excited to, to kind of talk today. And, and I'm a really firm believer that, that the answers are in the room. And so we're gonna give you guys a ton of opportunities to connect and, and get to know each other and, and share stories. And so we have a ton of content, probably more than, than we could ever get through in an hour, um, but we're gonna try to squeeze as much as we can. And so we are, uh, we're gonna kick it off um, right now as we are, uh, as we're gonna kick you guys into your first breakout room. 
So I want to give you guys the opportunity to connect uh, to each other. You guys are going to be in these rooms uh, several times. And so make introductions and, and talk about what brings you here, right? You, you saw the topic of change management. And so there must be something that, that is on your mind as you, as you think about that, whether that's um, you know, something in the past that, that has occurred that maybe you, you want to examine, something that you're going through right now that you're struggling with and, and you want an idea on, or something that you know is on the horizon. There's a formula for change. And so um, I didn't include this in the handout, but you guys can jot it down real quick, um, you know, or take a screenshot. Um, and, and lucky enough for you guys, I, I wasn't a math major, so I have no idea what this means. So I will have no idea whether you give it right or wrong. But uh, no, uh, Kathleen Dan Miller created a formula for change, um, and and it's kind of interesting. Dan uh, Dan Miller was a, a social psychologist, and and kind of created this idea of this formula for change. And and what I love about this is that um, you kind of see right on the left hand side there is dissatisfaction with the status quo, um, is the first item that that we're going to look at. As, as we think about that. So, so I think that's important for us, right? What, what are we dissatisfied about the current state, right? Whether that's something, um, you know, maybe very personal for you, um, you know, if, if, you know, it's something very personal health-wise, right? What is that dissatisfaction that you have, you know, around that idea? Um, whether that's something within a team or within an organization, um, what is that dissatisfaction with the current state that, that we really have to overcome? And, and then as we move through the rest of the formula, we're gonna see some pieces that, that uh, are reoccurring themes for us, right? This vision of the future, right? We're, we're future-oriented creatures. We, we love to think about what comes next. And so having that vision and those first steps become really important. And all of that has to be greater than the resistance to this change that, that we're gonna make, right? And so for us as individuals, as, as human beings, right, there's a lot that, that is fighting against us, right? Um, you know, psychologically and um, um, physiologically as well as, as we think about that, right? And so we have to overcome that resistance if, if we're gonna make change happen. And so as we move on to the second step, we really have to think about our coalition as, as individuals, right? Um, the, there's, there's a lot of research that talks about if we, if, if we have a workout partner, right? So if we have a goal of working out and, and we have a workout prop partner, we're, we're so much more likely to succeed in that, right? Because we can hold each other accountable. Um, we have somebody that we can share that, that idea and that vision with, and especially when we hit those low times, which, which we're always going to run into, we have somebody that can help pull us through. Right, and so, so for me, as I think about my coalition, as I'm thinking about change and, and working with teams, I really talk about the diffusion of innovation by, by Everett Rogers. And, and really this idea of um, that on both ends of the spectrum, we're gonna have people who jump into change and are excited about that, right? These are the people that camp out for, for the, newest, um, uh, the newest smartphone, right? But then on the other end of the spectrum, we're gonna have people who resist change. They, they want things to stay the same, right? They, they'd still have a rotary phone if, if it still worked, right? But the important thing for us as we think about change is this tipping point that, that Everett Rogers talks about. And the tipping point is about 15%. Right. So so as individuals, we have to think about, you know, what what's the population that we're really impacting? Right. Is that a team of 10? If it's a team of 10, I need two people that, that are willing to come along with me. If I can get two people, then I can get the rest of the group to to support me. Right. If it's 100 people right now, I need 15 people. And, and that's not overwhelming to the point where we have to talk 100 people into making a change. I, I can find 15 people that that think the way that I think. And so for us as individuals, how do we build that coalition? How do we think about who are the people around us who, who also have dissatisfaction, right? And, and who also think similarly about maybe the, the prospects for the future and what that might mean. And can we reach that 15% so that we can kind of get that mushy middle, as, as I like to call it, that early majority and late majority to move with us? Because they'll move in whatever direction um, they hear the most from, right? So if they hear from our laggards, um, the people who don't like change, they're gonna move in that direction. And, and we can think historically about plenty of times um, where we've had uh, failed innovations that, that were better but didn't come through, right? Because, uh, because the laggards were too, too strong, right? That voice was too strong. Um, 
And so as we move on to the third step, we really have to think about our vision, right? We, we've already seen this within, um, within our formula for change. What's that vision for the future? We as human beings are, are storytelling creatures, right? We, we grew up uh, and we evolved at sharing our knowledge through, through stories. And, and stories are really powerful um, as, as narrative de devices and, and as learning devices, right? So, so as you think about how we learn best, we, we learn best as, as we're told a story, as we're told an experience uh, that, that we can share. And this is really powerful um, when we think about an art project called Significant Objects. So Significant Objects took um, items that they found online. So, so they, uh, they spent about $100 and, and got 100 objects on, online through eBay. And they took all of these objects. These are some examples of them. They're, they're fairly innocuous, um, you know, things that, that you could find anywhere, right? Average, average cost was, was about a dollar. And what the art project did was they partnered with authors and they had an author write a story about each of these objects. And then they reposted them on eBay and sold them again. And they sold them, uh, they sold them for about $2,500. And the only thing that had changed was that these objects now had a story associated with them. They had meaning behind them and they had significance in the world, right? And so as we think about making change and we think about tying into that future that we all want to achieve, we have to, we have to think about what's the story that we're telling ourselves, right? And if, if that's something that's very personal to you, what's the story that you're telling yourself about why you're making this change, right? What's that vision for the future? What are you gonna be able to achieve in the future that you couldn't today? And focus on that, right? And continue to tell your story over and over and over again until it becomes real. If you're thinking about making change within, within a team structure or within an organization, what's that story about the future that you're telling your team or your organization? Um, without that, if, if, we're, you know, if we're talking about, oh, well, you know, we're going to increase sales by 20%, we're, we're going to be able to see X more number of patients, uh, numbers are, are certainly powerful for us, and, and they, they certainly show... Um, uh, you know, a lot of information and, and how we can convey that logically. But if we can talk about the, the change that we're going to make and, and the difference that's going to impact to maybe a, a particular person's life, all of a sudden now we've given that number significance. And we've taken it from being a cold, hard fact into something that's real and, and something that's tangible and something that's authentic for, for us as and something that's motivated, right? Um, and, and I think that that is... Uh, huge for us as we think about change both as individuals um, and as we begin to build on this topic of, of change in, in the coming sessions about how we motivate the small groups that we work with and, and the larger organizations that we're a part of. And so step number four is really about over communicating, right? And, and so we talk a lot about communication and, and as we've come into this reality of you know, standing in front of a computer screen for, for eight hours a day and, and being on camera, um, we've really thought a lot about communication, right? Or, or we should have, right? And so for, for me, I, I grew up studying communication and, and my background is in, is in communication. And so when I, when I talk about communication, I really mean all of the communication that we have, right? So not just sending an email, not just sending a single message, but how are we communicating this over and over and over again, right? Even from the small things for me, um, you know, the, the other day, um, the other day I showed up to a meeting and, and it was with, you know, 20 other people, nobody else had their camera on. And, and somebody made the comment to me about um, that I'm always really good about having my camera on. And, and I told them, well, that's because we as human beings derive 75% of our meaning from nonverbals. And so if you don't have your camera on, I'm missing 75% of the meaning that you're trying to convey to me. Right. And so all of you, the fact that all of you can see me, we now have a, a stronger, more richer um, uh, connection that is happening. You're able to derive all of the meaning and, and see, you know, the inflection in my voice and, and, you know, the hand gestures that I'm making. And, and all of that is really important as we think about over communicating. Can, can your audience see you? 
right? And and can they understand you? Are they are they getting the meaning that that you think that you are conveying, right? And so checking in on that message to understand, hey, you know what? We were talking about uh, this topic, and and I'm really passionate about this change. I want to make sure that I I conveyed what what I thought it was, right? So checking in on that message and having those opportunities to check in uh, in different ways as well. So think about all the different ways that we have to, to convey meaning and, and utilize that, right? And so uh, as you think about yourself as individuals, right? So, so what are the habits and, and the things that you're communicating to yourself as you tell that story, um, you know, about that change that you wanna make? What are the things that you're uh, talking to your team about in, in terms of the value that, that you think this change is going um, to bring to your work? So step number five is about removing obstacles, right? So, so remember, we, we talked in the formula about dissatisfaction. Um, there's always going to be people who, who resist you. And, and sometimes when you're thinking about yourself, that, that's you, right? You're, you're fighting against that change, right? And, and the, the neurons inside your brain are, are resisting you remaking that habit for you. It, it may be outside forces that, that you're impacting, right? You're changing the, the program that somebody developed. Well, of course, they're going to fight you. They've, they've invested a, a ton of, of time in developing that, right? Maybe, maybe you're, you're you know, kind of um, undermining something that, that uh, they've spent a lot of time developing, right? Of, of course, they're going to feel threatened by that, right? H how do we reach out and overcome those obstacles? And, and for me, I, I really go to, you know, the, the Eisenhower Matrix, which, which is a, a fabulous tool um, and, and has a great story behind it, right? So, um, so in, um, in 1942, there was a, a plan, um, uh, there was a plan to invade Europe um, prior to, to D-Day. And Eisenhower was uh, not, not in charge yet, but he got to see the generals work through the thought process of taking in huge amount of, of information about whether or not they should make this attack or not. And it ended up that they were consumed kind of this paralysis by analysis and, and they didn't go forward. And, and a lot of historians believe that they could have been successful and ended, ended the war you know, earlier and, and faster and, and saved countless numbers of lives. But what Eisenhower took away from that experience was this idea of how do we take in huge amounts of information and overcome the obstacles that stand in front of us? And, and so he really developed this matrix out of that experience. And, and really what it says is uh, how, how we as human beings need to prioritize things and, and we as leaders need to prioritize our decisions. Um, and so you see um, what's important and urgent, you need to take care of it, right? So, so as a leader, that, that's a time when, when you need to step in and, and accomplish something, right? If something's important and not urgent, then let's put together a plan, right? We don't need to solve something today if it's not going to be uh, affecting us for another six or, or nine months, right? Let's put, let's put a plan together. Um, if it's not important and it's urgent, how can we delegate that to, to somebody on our team? Right, so as we think about making change in an organization, if there if there's an area that's going to be impacted by by the change that you are uh, suggesting, maybe that's an opportunity to reach out and and add somebody to your coalition from that area. Um, if if somebody if if you're suggesting changes to a program that somebody has created and, and spent years making. Maybe that's an opportunity to bring them into your coalition and, and say, I know you've spent a lot of time creating this program, um, and, and that's been really valuable, right? Give, the, give them the credit for, for the work that's been done. Um, come be a part of, of remaking that solution. We've, we've got to do a better job, um, and we want to improve that program and, and serve more people and, and you know, um, you know, have better outcomes, whatever, whatever that vision for the future is. Um, bring them in to that fold. And, and then finally, if it's not important and it's not urgent, then, then we've got to eliminate it, right? Remember that diffusion of innovation on, on one side of it is always going to have laggards, people who resist change um, because they're, they're uninterested in it. They, they want things to stay the same. They, they like the status quo. They, they enjoy the comfort that it brings to them. And so we can't, as leaders, be consumed by... Um, appeasing all of those people, right? Um, we, we have to quickly be able to decide, is this unimportant and unurgent? 
then then we have to eliminate it right from from our from our thinking and and that allows us as leaders and, and change agents to stay focused on what's important right the laggards will come along with us right so if you think about um you know if, if you think about 10 15 years ago there were tons of people without smartphones right and today that percentage is is very low right and and that will continue to um, get smaller and smaller as, as we go forward. And so as we finish out the last step for, uh, for, for making change successful, it's really about planning short-term wins, right? So if you think about, you know, if, if, um, you know, if, I, if I wanna lose 10 pounds, right, and my first week out, I gain two pounds, um, I'm probably not going to be very successful, right? So I've gone to the gym, I've eaten right, I've done all the things that I'm supposed to be doing. If if I'm still gaining weight, that mentally I'm going to have a hard time sticking with all of the things that that I need to do. And so we have to prove that the sacrifices are worth it, right? We we have to reward that coalition that's around us to say what what are the things that we can do in the next couple of weeks to make this change successful. Um, and so, so for me, these are, these are kind of six simple steps that, that kind of walk us through um, kind of a great process for, for thinking about that, that change. And so I, I want to give you guys a chance um, to kind of talk through this topic and, and think about what, what have we all come through in the last 90 days and, and kind of think about everything that has happened to us all, right? Um, you know, like I said, from from the way that we work to to our families. If, if you you know, if you have kids, um, having your kids at home and, and not going to school every day and and having to juggle that, I, I know for me that that's been a that's been a huge change that that's um, that's been an adjustment. And so I, I want to I want you guys to think about you know what are the changes that that uh, um, have gone better than you thought, right? What are the changes that we've really struggled with? And then the most important question for me is, what's the difference between those things, right? Because as we come back and we think about the next step, it's really about taking that, uh, that feedback forward. So I, I wish we could hear from all of you because it, it's the thing that I, I uh, miss most about being in this format. And so what, we, what I do wanna do is hear from you in the chat box. And, and so I wanna hear about what was different about the changes um, that you talked about, right? So you talked about something that you were surprised it went well, right? And then there was something else that you were like, man, I, I really struggled with that. What was different about those things? Um, because I think that that's really where, where we go. So, so I want you to um, jump into the chat box and, and you know, um, shoot, us a, shoot us a note, um, uh, you know, about what, what you took away from, from that experience of talking about those two things. And we'll we'll kind of um, try to we'll try to keep up here. Um, so we had level of control, absolutely. That that's um, Caitlin. There's so much research about um, our our feeling of control um, is is really big. Yeah. Guilt and a sense of obligation, absolutely. Harlan, that's that's interesting. So the things that we're focused on are the things that went well. So so I I'm I'm going to assume that there were maybe things that you weren't focused on that that um, you know maybe just didn't have that intentionality around them, and, and those were the things. And Wendy, yes, there is no way to replicate human to human interaction. Absolutely, and I think we're learning that. Um, how much we miss that, right? So one of the stories I tell is um, every other Friday we do a Zoom happy hour. And when we were in person, I could have never have gotten my team to hang out for a couple hours and just and just interact. But now um, now they'll stay on for hours and and you know chat and share stories and, and all of these things. And so I think it just goes to to kind of show. So um, so we do have one more breakout session that we want to send you to because I, I don't want to send you away with like nothing looking forward to the future, right? So I want you to think about the next 30 days um, and, and the changes that, that are upon us, right? Um, if we think about what, how much change has happened in the last 90 days, 
what's coming up in the next 30? What's one change that you know that you're going to be tackling? And, and what's something that might stand in your way of that, right? And, and share with your group with those. And, and as a group, hopefully you'll be able to understand and, and come up with some, some ways to uh, tackle that change. Okay, awesome. Well, I hope that I hope that you were able to, um, you know, kind of articulate some of the things that, um, you know, you heard. And so I want to just follow up like we did before. I, I want you to jump in the chat box and and talk to us about something that surprised you today. You know, in your in your group's discussion, you had an opportunity to connect with some people that you didn't know that um, that you, you know you, you never met before before today. Um, what what surprised you? Uh, you know about the discussion. Yeah, the reminder that we're all individuals. I, I think that's it's been really interesting. I you know um, we we were talking about the amount of grace that we have to have now, right? We get this little window into everybody's world, right? And you know before we would come to work and and. Uh, you know, then we would leave and, and, you know, you would disappear, right? But now, like, we get this little window into everybody's world, right, of, of you know, cats and dogs and uh, kids fighting in the background. And, um, you know, I, I think we've all seen the, um, the unfortunate videos of people forgetting that they're on uh, a camera or their, their mic is on. And, and even things like that don't spare our Supreme Court justices, right? Um, so we've all, we've all learned that we have to have a little bit more grace, that we're all, you know, we're all individuals. And I think, I think that that's a good thing, right? I mean, I love, um, I love getting a little glimpse into my team's world every day, right? Um, you know, I get, to, I get to see what's happening, like in the changes in their, in their background. And I'm like, oh, hey, that, that, that's interesting. You, you, you know, you're, you, you set this thing up or you, you finish this thing or, you know, what's that thing over there, right? And, um, it, it's been good. Uh, let's see. Um, we're not, yeah, we're not alone. And, and I think that that is something that is hugely beneficial, right? They, there's a lot of research that talks about, um, if, if you make a public commitment, um, to others, you're much more likely to be able to achieve your goals, right? And so it's one of the reasons that I asked you, you know, to, to kind of uh, talk with your group about what's coming up for you and, and what are those habits that, that are really, uh, potentially holding you back because now you've you've made a commitment to others and you've you verbalized that you've made it real right and and it's much harder for us uh, now to escape that right even if I never see those people again um, um, mentally now you've you verbalized that you made a commitment and and there's something different psychologically about that right so fantastic I I love hearing all of the different things, um, you know, meeting people where, where they're at, Sergio, I think, I think that's a great way to put it, right? And, and how, do we, how do we do that in a way that, that is authentic and, and helps them achieve the things that, that they want to achieve while, while, we're, while we're taking care of ourselves as well, right? So, absolutely. Yeah, many, many common things. And, and it's, it's one of the reasons that I, I enjoy um, this format is, is giving you guys the chance to connect. I, I really am a firm believer that, that the answer is in the room, right? You, you guys all are going through similar things. You, you have gone through similar experiences and, and the answers are there. And so I, I would encourage you, you know, not to, um, not to stop, you know, at, at the end of this call, thinking about these things, right? How can you challenge your, your teams to, to think in the same way about the changes that, that are, that have happened and and will be happening in the future, right? And so, um, you know, and and I, Wendy, I think that that's a that's an amazing sentiment, right? Not not to be afraid of of what comes ahead, right? And um, you know that that's uh, that's a great way to look at it, right? I think if if this crisis has given us anything, it's given us more grace um, for for everything that that. Um, that we've all gone through. And so um, I want to be sensitive to your guys' time. And, and so I'm, I'm happy to hang out and talk about this all day. Um, but I, I would love to hear from you if, if you 
um, if you want to keep the conversation going, um, you know, reach out to me and, and um, um, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, I'm happy to talk about change and, and the, the change that, that is happening and, and that we're going through. And, and if you're, if you're struggling with it, with, you know, kind of thinking through that thought process, you know, please feel free to reach out and, and um, you know, let me know how, how you're doing and what you need help with. So thank you guys very much for, for your time. It, it is your most valuable resource. And, and so I, um, I thank you for, for spending an hour um, with us today. We, we could have spent eight hours on this topic and still not scratch the surface. So we, we certainly didn't do it justice, but, but I love hearing um, that there was so much great discussion today. So thank you very much. Thank you everyone for attending the Sizzling Summer Series Part 1. Join us July 14th at 11 a.m. or July 28th at 3 p.m. Central Time for Part 2, Change and the Small Group. And Part 3 happens in August, Change and the Organization. And thank you again for completing the evaluation for the call, which will be sent out to your emails sometime in the next 48 hours. So thanks so much and take care.